Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video today. Today I want to show you how to charge your large power stations in your vehicle. Now if you're familiar with charging off 12 volts, when you plug these into your vehicle normally, you're going to see around 100 watts charging input, which is going to take about 20 hours to fill these up. So if you're living in your van, you're overlanding, or you're car camping, you're going to need a backup way to charge these a lot faster because if solar isn't around, you're going to be waiting 20 hours. So I have three different boost converters that I've purchased. This one here is from Victron. I have two other models and I want to show you there's an efficient, easy way to charge these up a lot quicker. Now the theory behind this video is that whenever your engine's running, you have your alternator that's charging your starter battery. And most alternators can produce 200 to 250 amps of power. And so that extra power is able to be used by these power stations. Now the key is that you have to boost up the voltage to a higher level so you can get more watts into the power stations. And that's what these converters are for. So let's go ahead and take this video inside. We're going to break down the specifications on each converter and do a ton of different tests. Now I'm excited to show you guys the three converters that we'll be testing here in the video. The most expensive option is this Victron Energy Orion. It is a 12 to 24 volt boost converter and it's rated at 20 amps continuous. Now what's nice about this one is it has an adjustable output. There's a potentiometer that you can adjust with a screw. You can put out anywhere from 20 all the way up to 30 volts. This is also the only option with active cooling so it's going to have really good thermal performance. Now this is fairly expensive, it comes in at $170 to $160 online. Now the next option we'll be testing is this beast of a converter. This is a 12 to 36 volt boost converter rated at 20 amps continuous. Now this is nice because it puts out a higher voltage and so your larger power stations are going to be able to use this full power. Now the only downside of this is it does not have active cooling so this is probably going to get pretty warm. We'll be testing that. So this one comes in at around $100, a little bit less, a little bit more, depending on where you purchase this one. Now the last one that we'll be testing is just a generic 12 to 24 volt boost converter rated at 20 amps. This one comes in at $35. So I just wanted to see how this cheap option compares to these two here. Now I suggest you guys hold on to your butts because we have a ton of testing that we're gonna be doing. Six large power stations with each converter that is 18 different tests to see which one we get the most wattage on. We'll also be testing the efficiency for each converter to see which one's the most efficient. And at the end of the video, we'll be testing for thermal performance to make sure these don't get so hot that they're just gonna melt whatever they're mounted to. So if you guys are excited, let's just jump right into it. Now this is the testing process that I did on each of the six power stations that I tested with the boost converters. I took this Chin's 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, I connected up each boost converter and then plugged it into each power station. After doing all 18 tests, I recorded that information and put it into a couple graphs. Let's go ahead and break down the results. So taking a look at the results with the Victron boost converter, plugging into the Delta II, we got 418 watts. The AC200 Max, we got 415. Plugging into the Delta Max Gen 1, we got 376 watts. The FF Power P2001, 295 watts. The Anchor 767, 272 watts. And the Pecron E2000, we got 109 watts. Now let's go ahead and break down the performance for the Victron boost converter. Now we saw some really high wattage on some power stations and lowers on others. And why is that? Well, one key thing about this boost converter is it puts out 28 volts under peak power meaning that some power stations are gonna treat this 28 volts as car charging and some are gonna treat it as solar charging. Now, what's the difference there? Well, usually with solar charging, they're gonna to go to their peak amperage input and then if they're charging with car charging, they're gonna lower that down to eight to 10 amps so they don't blow any fuses or burn the wires up in your car. That's where we saw a difference. Looking back at the graph, the Delta II, AC200 Max and Delta Max, they all were able to get peak charging input. They treated this as a solar panel. But the FF Power, the Anchor 767, and the Pecron E2000 all said, hey, the voltage isn't quite high enough, so we're gonna charge at our lower amperage limits. So one of the downsides of this is that the voltage isn't very high. So I'm excited to test the next boost converter because it goes all the way up to 36 volts. So we'll see if we get maximum input on the power stations using that boost converter. So taking a look at the numbers while using the 12 to 36 boost converter, on the Anchor 767, we got 700 watts. The Blue Eddy AC200 Max, we got 530. The FF Power P2001, we got 525. The EcoFlow Delta II, we saw 500. The EcoFlow Delta Max, we saw 465. And the Pecron E2000, we got 453 watts. 
Wow guys, just a little bit more voltage and you can see you get so much more power. And that higher voltage allowed all the power stations to max out their charging inputs, at least at the amperage and voltage levels. So the anchor taking in 20 amps, we saw 700 watts from this thing. Um, that's a lot of power. I'm not sure if all alternators could handle that, so just keep that in mind. But we saw really good numbers on all the other ones too. 530 all the way down to 430. So this one did perform really well. Now just remember, we will be doing efficiency testing and thermal testing um, because this one did get a little bit warm, so we'll see how that did later in the video. Let's go ahead and test the final boost converter, the cheap small one. Now with the cheap $35 boost converter, we saw 338 watts into the Delta II. We saw 306 into the Delta Max, 258 into the P2001, 230 into the Anchor 767, 196 on the AC200 Max, and 114 on the E2000. So pretty respectable results from this plain Jane cheap 12 to 24 volt boost converter. Puts out 24 volts under peak load, and most power stations are gonna treat this like car charging, but some of you may be wondering, Jason, how'd you get over 300 watts on both the EcoFlow power stations using this boost converter? Well, I'll tell you guys, there's a secret here that's not well known. EcoFlow makes two different XT60 charging adapters. You have the XT60 that has the orange tip with a metal pin on it, and then you have the XT60 that's yellow. Now, in all the testing today, I use the XT60 with the uh, metal pin, and what this does is it tricks the power station into allowing the full amperage input. And so if you have an EcoFlow power station and you want to get the maximum input and you have the proper wiring and fuses and all that stuff, you can use this charging adapter. This is what I've been using for all my testing and you can get peak power from basically any boost converter. So pretty cool that EcoFlow offers that feature. Okay guys, this is just getting good. Now we're gonna jump into the efficiency to see if more money equals more efficiency. So how we're gonna test this, we're gonna be charging the FF Power P2001. It was right in the middle of the line, so it gives us a good average. We're gonna have the battery, the converter, and the power station. We're gonna test the amperage and voltage on each side of the converter to see how efficient it is. So let's go ahead and jump into the results. Now starting with the Victron boost converter, power input was 25.2 amps at 13.09 volts, 330 watts. Power output was 10.53 amps at 28.26 volts or 297 watts. 297 divided by 330 gives you 90.0% efficiency on the Victron boost converter. Moving on to the 12 to 36 volt boost converter, power input was 44.6 amps at 12.82 volts. 571 watts. Power output was 14.5 amps at 35.7 volts, which was 518 watts. 518 divided by 571 gives you 90.7% efficiency on the 36 volt boost converter. Now to the smallest version, the 12 to 24 volt boost converter. Power input was 20.26 amps at 13.14 volts, 266 watts. Power output was 10.36 amps at 23.89 volts, which is 247 watts. 247 divided by 266 gives you 92.8% efficiency on the cheap boost converter. Oh man, that was a lot of numbers, guys. My mind is about to explode, but final efficiency numbers, 92% on this one, 90.7 on this one, 90.0 on this one. So they're all fairly efficient. Now I know people are gonna ask, well, can't you just charge with an AC inverter instead of doing all this DC to DC conversion stuff? Yes, you definitely can do that, but it's not gonna be nearly as efficient. Remember, you're going from your DC battery to an AC inverter back to the DC on the power station. So you're gonna have a little bit more loss than these here. So just keep that in mind. Now in the next test in the video, we're gonna be testing thermal performance on each one of these to see how hot they get after sitting for an hour. I hope you guys are excited. Let's jump right into it. Now to test the thermal performance on each of these boost converters, I took the average wattage and then ran it at that wattage for an hour and then measured with my thermal camera to see what temperature it was. Now starting off with the Victron, I ran it at a 350 watt load and after an hour, it was measuring 120 degrees Fahrenheit with my thermal camera. Now this is with the fan that would turn on periodically, so 120 degrees was the max temperature. Now we're testing the 12 to 36 volt boost converter. I ran it at a 500 watt load and after an hour it measured 155 degrees Fahrenheit with my thermal camera and this is pretty toasty. Now measuring the smallest one, the 12 to 24 volt boost converter, 
I had it running at a 250 watt load and after an hour it was measuring 122 degrees Fahrenheit with my thermal camera so this one didn't get that hot. Now what if you wanted to actively cool one of these converters that didn't have fans? Now I did test this, I took the 12 to 36 volt boost converter, ran it at a 500 watt load, but this time I put a small USB fan that was blowing onto the converter and after an hour the temperature was only 107 degrees, so it was actually cooler than the Victron. So if you wanted to add active cooling to one of these boost converters, you could definitely lower the temperature. Okay, well those are the numbers for the thermal testing. I gave you guys the efficiency numbers and also the expected wattages on six different power stations. So hopefully whatever power station you have will apply to one of the options that I demonstrated. Now I briefly want to talk about the wire size, you know, wire gauge and the amount of amps that you're getting from your starter battery or battery that you're using while, you know, charging with one of these converters. Now let's take this 500 watt um, average boost converter here. Now we got 500 watts on all the power stations. Let's just remove losses and say, okay, it's charging at 500 watts from the battery. So it's pulling 500 watts from the battery and it's also putting 500 watts out to the power station. You're gonna be pulling around 40 amps from that battery. So you need to make sure that your wires are a large enough gauge to handle that 40 amps continuous. And then your output's gonna be, you know, 10 to 15 to maybe 20 amps. So I would recommend 10 gauge wire going out to your power station just to avoid, um, you know, voltage drop or even just to keep the wire from getting warm. So what I did in my truck is I used six gauge welding wire. Um, it's copper stranded, it's really high quality stuff. And I go from my starter battery with a fuse all the way back to the back of my truck. It's about 25 feet or so. They have a lot of different charts online about, hey, this certain wire gauge can handle this many amps. Hopefully you guys found this information helpful. In the last part of the video, I wanna go ahead and do some live demos outside in the truck just to show you what you'd expect on maybe two or three power stations. So let's go ahead and jump outside and show you guys the live demos. Okay guys, we're outside and I wanna show you guys some real world testing examples of charging large power stations with your truck or your vehicle. So we have three large power stations. We have the EcoFlow Delta II, the FF Power P2001, and the Blue Eddy AC200 Max that we'll be testing. I'm also gonna be testing the Blue Eddy EB3A. So starting with the EcoFlow Delta II, I'm gonna be using the Victron boost converter. Um, I think a lot of people are gonna go to this one because it has the built-in fan and it's from a large brand name, so you know, it has some credibility there. Um, so let me pull this out and I'll show you guys how it's connected up to the truck. Okay, so this is how the Victron is going to connect up. I have this going to my 6 gauge wire in the truck and I have 10 gauge wire coming off Anderson power pole to MC4 and then this is the MC4 solar charging cable that came with this unit. Remember it has the orange metal tip charging port so this allows it to charge at the higher rate. So let me go ahead and start the truck and we'll see how many watts we're getting. Okay, so with the truck idling and the Victron plugged into the Delta II, we're getting 409 watts charging input. Now that is four times faster than if you were just to charge off 12 volts alone. Now I wanted to see how much power was coming into my starter battery for my alternator and I was measuring around 43 amps. And then I measured the power going out to the Victron and it was around 35 amps. So it definitely was still charging the battery and we weren't going negative. Okay, so in the next demo, we're gonna be using the 12 to 36 volt boost converter with the Blue Eddy AC200 Max. Now this is connected up to my starter battery. I have an Anderson power pole connection on the end of this. And with the Blue Eddy, I'm using the stock charging cable with an XT90 to Anderson power pole adapter, and that will connect right here. So let's go ahead and start the engine and plug it in and see how many watts we get. Okay, so I have it plugged in and charging. You can see we're getting 530 watts charging input from the 12 to 36 volt boost converter. So pretty good wattage on the AC200 Max. Now just remember this one does get pretty warm after a while. So maybe in a cold day like this with the wind blowing, uh, this would actually stay pretty cool. But uh, if it was enclosed and in a hot environment, you'd wanna make sure that you have a fan blowing on this so that it does not overheat. Um, but still lots and lots of power coming from this 12 to 36 volt converter. Now this has been running for about 15 minutes now and the power station's almost full. And one thing I'd recommend you guys do is if you're gonna plan to charge like this, look at the alternator and what its rated uh, power is. For example, for my truck, it's rated to put out 170 amps at idle and then above 1800 RPMs, it's rated at 270 amps. So we're not really anywhere close to maxing out my alternator. But if you had a smaller car or a minivan, your alternator may be a lot smaller. So you wanna make sure that you're not pushing it too far. I would recommend staying under 50% the rated 
uh, output of your alternator if you're looking to do something like this. So look up your alternator and see what it's rated at. Now the last two charging demos are going to be using the smallest 12 to 24 volt boost converter. So this is actually compatible with smaller power stations that have a lower voltage input limit. So we'll first be testing this with the FF Power P2001. Now this has Anderson power pole. It plugs straight into the FF Power. Let's go ahead and start the truck and see how many watts we get charging on this one. So using the 12 to 24 volt boost converter, we're getting around 255 to 260 watts output on the FF Power. So double the speed that you charge at just 12 volts. Now for the final charging demo, I'm gonna show you guys the small boost converter with the Blue Eddy EB3A. Now, because this puts out 24 volts and most small power stations will have a limit around 28 volts or a little bit less, this is still compatible. So just keep that in mind. You do not want to use the higher voltage uh, boost converters on your small power stations. Now this has Anderson power pole coming off. So I have an Anderson power pole to 7909. This plugs right into the Blue Eddy EB3A. Now, when we start this up, this is going to basically behave like a 200 watt solar panel. So you can double your charging speed off 12 volts by using a small boost converter like this. Let's see how many watts we get. Okay, so on the EB3A, it's jumping around a bit. I've seen 149, 137, and it also went up to 180. So it's just jumping around a little bit. Maybe this specific boost converter doesn't work well with the EB3A, but you can see we're still charging faster than we would at 12 volts. Okay guys, after a ton of testing, pretty interesting results. We have three different boost converters with three different price points and they all have different use cases. So I'd love to get your guys' feedback. If you wanted to charge your large power stations using boost converters, which one would you choose? Now, of course, there's many different ways to charge your power stations. I always prefer charging with solar. You could also charge with an AC generator or even using an AC inverter on your starter battery. Now with an AC inverter, I wouldn't recommend going higher than a 500 watt inverter so certain power stations that will work and certain ones that won't. For example, the Blue Eddy AC 200 Max charges at about 470 watts, so that'll work with a 500 watt inverter. The Delta II has an adjustable charging input, so that would also work. And the FF Power P2001, it charges at 1100 watts and 1100 watts only. So it would actually just trip that 500 watt inverter. So certain use cases will work and certain ones won't. Now you also have to keep in mind an AC inverter is not nearly as efficient as the DC to DC inverters here. Now I'd love to get your guys' feedback. What do you guys think about this whole scenario? Throw a comment down below. Also, if you guys haven't seen my other content, I test uh, power stations in depth. Any power station you saw in this video, I have an in-depth review for it. Also, I test 12 volt fridges and solar panels. And all three of those go together for overlanding, car camping, or the van life scenario. So if you guys have that type of scenario going on, you'll probably be interested in my other content. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video.